Hey, welcome back to Baird Squid. On this channel, we do simplifying education technologies using the iPad. Today's session, I wanna show you whether Google Docs is any good on the iPad. Most of us are familiar with the G Suite being an online web-based application, and it is. And since iPad OS 13, when Apple introduced a web class browser, a desktop class browser for the iPad, what we're gonna do is we're gonna experience the same desktop class quality and the performance of the G Suite using Safari on the iPad. This is the best way to do it. So if, you, if you've got the, the G Suite applications, um, delete them go ahead and delete them you can also download them if you're not happy with them but delete them for now and we're going to use uh, safari i'm going to show you how powerful this is in fact in some instances uh, using the g suite on the ipad through safari is more powerful than using the desktop counterpart okay i'm going to show you that right now so first thing first what we need to do is go to safari go to uh, google.com okay and sign in as usual and then when you sign in you'll see um, this app um, menu here and from here you can go to your drive you can go to your uh, Google Docs I'm just gonna go to the drive today's session we're just doing the Google Docs I'm gonna be doing the other G Suite applications uh, in other videos so make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications for that uh, so once I've gone to my drive what we can do is as usual we can go to new and we can go to Google Docs now if I click on this arrow actually if I hover over it I don't need to even click on it I can do a blank doc or I can do from a template so just I want to show you from a template I want to show you that Look, we have all the options that we do on the desktop version, okay, which is web-based anyway. So let's say, for example, we want to do, I don't know, this uh, company newsletter. So let's check this out. Uh, and the template is right there, and then we can go ahead and start, you know, changing this to suit our needs. I'm going to go back to my drive. I've already got a doc here, tutorial for Google Docs. I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here, okay? I'm going to show you a couple of things, predominantly answering this question for you. Is Google Docs any good on the iPad? The bottom line yes it is so if you've got no time just take my word for it and you can click off this video however if you're interested in finding out why it's so amazing on the ipad let me show you okay so most of you will be familiar with this view because it's the same as any uh, desktop browser okay you've got all the toolbars here um and so i'm not going to go over the formatting or the tools because all of that is available here okay i'm going to go through some things like inserting a table linking it to a google sheets um inserting pictures uh, drawing tools and the things that really put this on another level compared to the desktop version because our iPad has touch input and the Apple pencil import um, stylus input it makes it over and beyond what you could do on a desktop version okay so let's go into this then so first thing first um, there's something here I want to show you yeah now formula input formula input you can do that on the desktop as well to be fair yeah this here is um insert from formula so if i go to insert here and i go to equation okay this gives me the equation editor and then i can use all of these tools here to basically uh bring in let's say for example a fraction okay two over three okay two thirds as a fraction i know that's tiny but you can see there it's two thirds as a fraction. This whole formula here was inserted through equations as well, but that's the same as a desktop. So what, why does that make it any, any better on the iPad? Well, I'll show you why it makes it better on the iPad. Because if I go back to insert, although I've got this equation editor and special characters, what I can do is I've got add-ons, okay? And you can go and get add-ons, you can manage your add-ons as well. So I'm gonna go and show you here the add-ons and why this is so important. So. If I'm looking at these add-ons, you can type in here, um, you know, any add-ons that you're looking for. For example, MLA formatting. What else is here? Oh, this is a nice one. Word cloud. You can make a little word cloud. The one I've installed is math type. Okay, so I've installed this math type. I'm going to show you it here. So if I go back to my add-ons, I've got math type here. Now I can insert a formula, a math equation or a chemistry formula. Okay, insert a chem formula or a math equation. I'm going to go to math equation. Look at this. this look at the power of the iPad now. Yeah. Because I've got touch input and I've got a stylus input, yeah? I can write a formula here. So for example, if I write 4 thirds pi r cubed, okay? It's gonna scan it and recognize what that formula is and then I can insert that formula. Let's go with a more difficult one. Okay, this is a quadratic formula. Look at my scribbles, of course. If I wasn't recording, I would set this up uh, nicely so I can record it. Uh, there's an issue here, it thinks my A, which does really look like an N. So I can cut that out and write maybe A. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and now I can insert that, okay? I can insert this as a formula. And that's what puts this on another class. Because I've got touch input, um, I can insert things like that using the add-ons. In fact, I'm gonna show you here, look, I've got a drawing of a sphere. Now this sphere, I created that myself. If I go to insert, 
and I'm going to go to drawing. So I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to go to add this circle. And look at this, if I press shift, it locks it into a perfect circle, okay? So I'm going to go with that one there and I'm going to get another circle here. And look at this, I can even join this line to these points. It allows me to pinpoint exactly where I want it. It doesn't stop there, I can, I've got all the formatting tools as well. So for example, if I shade this and I want to shade it as a gradient, look at this. I can also shade this as a gradient as well, call that a gradient of, there we go. Now that looks like a three dimensional shape. Now, what makes this a bit different on the iPad is if I come down to here and I scribble, okay, I can introduce the scribble tool here, I can annotate this, okay, with my handwriting. Now that's difficult to do with a, a mouse or a trackpad on a desktop computer without a touch screen. So here I can sign this off, okay, I can call this signed off by BS, that's not what you're thinking BS, that's Baird Squared, okay? So if you're familiar with my channel, uh, we're Baird Squared. Okay, so here we go. Where's that, in where did I insert, here we go. So this is now a, f a, a drawing that I've created here on the dock. Another thing that I'm gonna show you is what you're familiar with on the desktop is if we create a table and link it to a sheet, okay? And I'm gonna show you something really, really interesting here that you're gonna think, oh my God, could you even do that on an iPad? So stay tuned, look at this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a table here. Actually, if I insert a chart, you'll see something here, yeah? Normally when you're inserting a chart, you're inserting it from data. So here, if I insert a chart, it just puts in a random chart. I don't know what this chart is. However, if I go to open source, it's gonna open up the Excel that is linked to that data. I can change this data. Like I can manipulate and put any data that I want in here, for example. Uh, if I'm tracking the number of cars and I'm saying the frequency, okay, I'm just looking outside the window. We're all in quarantine at the moment, or some of you are out of lock, um, lockdown. So I'm gonna say number of cars, one, two, I'm pressing shift, uh, sorry, pressing enter, three, four, five, and then if I go here and look at the frequency, number of cars outside, I'm gonna delete this chart and I'm gonna uh, highlight this. I'm gonna select that data and I'm gonna say insert my own chart here, yeah? Now this isn't a video on Excel, I'll do another video, so not Excel sheets. I just want to try to show you how we can link a sheet to a Google Doc. Now I don't want this a line graph, I want it a bar chart, that's my bar chart. So I'm gonna select my chart, I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna to go to copy. And then I'll go to that tutorial. I don't want that one. And I want to paste in the chart. And it says link to spreadsheet. Do I want to link it to that spreadsheet? Of course I do, yeah. Because if I make any amendments, it can change it. Now, I'm not happy with that only. I also want to have the data. So I want to copy this data and I'm going to paste it into my doc and I'm going to paste it here. So let's go back to edit and we can paste. Of course, you can use the keyboard shortcuts as well since we've got you know, keyboard and trackpad and mouse input as well. So I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna link it to that data. You know, it's quite cumbersome going back and forth to different tabs. Look at this. Now this is what is this is what I was talking about. This is what I was promising that, it, you know, uh, it puts it on a familiar platform to what you would see in the desktop browser, yeah? So I can drag this and I can put it in split screen side by side. Now if I just adjust this um, view to 75% zoom, now I've got two docs open up, well that's a doc and that's a sheet. I've got two Google Suite applications open up in the web browser and I can go back and edit and change this stuff. Now look, since this is linked, yeah, since it's linked to the sheets, watch what I can do here. If I change this, this is quite dynamic. Now if I change this and I say, let's say 10, this is exaggerate this, there's 10, okay, that's changed the graph here. You can see it's changed the graph. Now, if I go back to the doc, you can see here that it says update. So if I update this information, it's gonna update the chart from the Google Sheet because it's linked. And the same thing is true for this, the table. I can update my table and it will update that information linking to the Google Sheets. Can you have um, two Google Docs open? Let me show you something here, yeah? I'm gonna go to my drive and I'm gonna open that exact same file again. Okay, I'm gonna open that same file again. And I'm gonna show you here, watch. I can drag this into split screen. Now I've got the same document in a split screen view. Look at this, this is quite interesting. You can see that Beard's typing in over here. Let me just go ahead and increase that font so you can actually see it. So here we'll call it a title. Hey, how you doing? And then I can be over here and I could be responding. Thanks. And let's just increase that so you can see what's going on. You can actually insert here a contents page. So if I go to the top and you're writing report, a semester or something, I've got to insert and I can insert an actual contents page here, yeah, table of contents. So I'm go here, table of contents, edit some of these into a different format. That could be my heading one, 
that could be heading two. What else do I have here? That could be heading three. Okay, now if I go back to the top and I want to click on my contents page, look, I can update the contents page and it will take me to that part of the document. So this is fantastic for you know college reports, university reports, you're doing a, a contents page, you're writing an assignment, okay, an essay, you can go uh, and have a dynamic contents page as well. So look, Google Docs on the iPad is flawless. It has all the same applications as it does on, on the desktop version. In fact, uh, there are added advantages when it comes to pen import and st stylus import and touch import. Uh, I think it goes on another level. You know, I've been using the iPad for about three years exclusively. Um, and since the desktop quality browser has come on Safari in iPad OS 13, and now with mouse and trackpad support, my favorite mouse is this one here, uh, the MX Anyway 2. It's, it's great, it's small, it's portable. Trackpad, uh, of course, the Apple Magic Trackpad, Trackpad 2. All of these configurations really are putting the iPad in a class of its own. So is uh, Google Docs, is it any good on the iPad? Yes, it is. It's fantastic. And as you explore it even more, I encourage you to explore it. Please consider subscribing, turn on notifications. I am pumping out a lot of videos. In fact, you can go check out some of the videos that I've done on Microsoft Office for the iPad. Again, those applications have outstanding features that again are exclusive to the iPad and really put me in a position to use the iPad over my MacBook. So go check those out and stay tuned because I'm going to pump out a lot of more videos about the Google Suite so that might be useful to you as long as a lot of us are moving on to online uh, education and a lot of institutions, enterprises are moving on to online. We don't know what the next normal is. Like okay, if we go back into uh, office, if we go back into office, go back to schools, we don't know what the situation is. Maybe, we, maybe we'll have a blended classroom or blended work um, workspace we don't know so stay tuned and as always i'll see you in the next one